Good afternoon. I'm pleased to present these trice cuffs with valve cases. Here are my disclosures. The objections of this uh, talk will be to present cases reviewing tricuspid valve leaflet an, uh, anatomy as well as to present an example of a triclip uh, procedural assessment. So I'm first going to present some cases on uh, leaflet identification. Uh, so this first case is a young uh, woman who presents with fever as well as a significant past medical history of IV drug use. Um, as you can see on these uh, transthoracic images, there is a mass on the tricuspid valve. So on the top row, we have an RV inflow view plus a cross plane in the short axis view. If we focus on the top left image, you can see that we can see the um, RV inflow view. There's the ventricular septum as well as the coronary sign is still in the picture. So we know that the leaflet to the left is going to be your septal leaflet. The leaflet on the right is your anterior leaflet and you can see that clearly there's a mass or vegetation there. If we look at the top right image, you can see that this is the short axis view. Now in the short axis view, if you're tilted more so you see LVOT then you're, and you're seeing a single leaflet, that's the anterior leaflet. If you see two leaflets and you're looking at the anterior and posterior leaflets, and if you see three leaflets like you do here, you see a septal leaflet, the anterior leaflet, as well as the posterior leaflet. So here there is vegetation clearly seen on both the anterior leaflet as well as the posterior leaflet. On the bottom left image is a four chamber view. Now, if it's a true four chamber view with no um, aortic or coronary sinus visible, then it's very hard to know if you are looking at the septal and anterior leaflet or the septal and posterior leaflet. Here you can see on the every second beat, we're getting a little bit of coronary sinus coming into the picture. So we know that we're a little bit posterior. So this is probably going to be septal and uh, posterior leaflet. And you can see there's a mass on the posterior leaflet the large vegetation on the anterior leaflet is kind of popping in and out, um, but it's really hard to say for sure that there's nothing on the septal leaflet. And then the bottom right image just shows the significant uh, mitral regurgitation, uh, tricuspid regurgitation that is coming through the valve. Now let's look at the transesophageal images. So we have two sets here. On the left, we are in a true mid-esophageal view. We've tilt, uh, rotated over. Um, you see in this, along the septum, there's no visualization of the uh, coronary sinus and you can see a little bit of the LVOT coming in and out of plane so you know that you're anterior so then this is going to be your uh, septal and anterior leaflets and then you can see that down below with the matching color image there's a single jet coming from the commissure if you look on the right low, uh, images, we're now in the low esophagus. We've pushed the probe down a little bit. You can see coronary sinus coming in. So now we know that we are looking at anterior and posterior leaflets. And you see there's vegetations on both as well as a large perforation through the anterior leaflet. And when you look at the color image, you can see the two color discs. One represents the cooptation line and one is the perforation through the leaflet. Now we're pulled back up and we're more mid-esophageal again. We're in a short axis inflow outflow view of the right heart. And you can see we have um, two leaflets here. So we've both got anterior, which is more towards the aortic valve and the posterior leaflet, which is more lateral. And you see vegetation's clearly on both of those, as well as the jet coming between the two of them. And on the right image, we are in a sort of off-axis four chamber view. We're very posterior located because you can see the coronary sinus coming in. And so here you can see that we've got the uh, posterior leaflet as well as the anterior leaflet and their vegetations on both of those. Now we're going down into the stomach <clears throat> and these transgastric views are actually very um, helpful if you can get all three leaflets in view. Uh, here we don't really appreciate the jet because we're very um, uh, we're not uh, located in the ideal plane to show the, the jet here, but you do see that there is a um, thickening on the anterior leaflet. So the septal, septum tells you where the septal leaflet is, the liver tells you where the posterior leaflet is, and then by default, the remaining leaflet is your anterior leaflet. Here we've actually taken a biplane and cut through the two leaflets, so then you know when you're matching um, a two chamber view which leaflets you're looking at. So on the left set series, we're cutting through the anterior and posterior leaflets, and you can see the large mass on the anterior leaflet as well as the, the perforation, and you can see a mass on the posterior leaflet. And then on the right set of image, we're cutting uh, through the chunkiest part of the anterior leaflet with the mass. Um, and a little bit of the septal leaflet, and you can see that there might be uh, a little bit of a involvement of that septal leaflet. Here we're just getting a closer look at that anterior and posterior leaflet, so you can see that there is color coming from both the perforation in the anterior leaflet as well as between the coaptation line. 
Uh, what are the things you have to be aware of if you're seeing a left-sided lesion is to make sure there's no stunts between the two chambers. And here you can see there is a large BFO and the uh, color is going um, both ways. And so this is, this is why in some patients we um, close the PFO before they get a pacemaker wire in case they ever get any of those uh, masses, uh, frivolous masses on the pacemaker lead with time or uh, they develop infection of their leads. So here's the 3D uh, taken from a distance showing the sort of destroyed nature of the trichus valve leaflet as well as the mass on that anterior leaflet. So in summary, there's large vegetations on the anterior and posterior leaflets of this patient and there is uh, likely a minor involvement of the septal leaflet. So to follow up on this patient, she was actually medically managed because of her persistent IV drug use. And so this shows the natural history of untreated infective endocarditis on the valve or, or um, medically managed um, and you can see that the entire anterior leaflet has now um, been destroyed. There is a tricuspid leaflet. The RV, due to the volume load, has dilated and is enlarged. And you can see um, on the inflow view that because of the remodeling, the cords from the septal leaflet to the wall as well as the tip are now tethering the leaflet also. So let's look at this next case. So this is a patient who is a painter who presents with chest pain. Um, and he, his stress test was normal uh, in terms of ischemia. However, a mass was found during the stress echocardiogram. So here are some pictures of the mass that was seen on the surface study. Um, the leftmost image is a RV inflow view. And so you see coronary sinus, so you know you're looking at anterior and septal leaflet. In the short axis view on the second from the left image, you uh, were looking at the um, aortic valve. And we see two leaflets, so you know that they're look the mass is on the. Uh, it almost looks like it should be on the posterior leaflet, uh, but it's really hard to tell. And then on the apical four chamber view, once again you're uh, you see it with every as during systole you see the LVOT popping in, so you know your anterior leaf. So there's septal and anterior leaflet, but here it looks more like it's once again on that septal leaflet. And on the transgastrics, it looks again like you're in it's on that septal leaflet. So we do a TE to better localize it and get better measurements of this mass and better characterize it. And so here on the leftmost image, you're in a mid-esophageal view. You've got a four chamber. We've rotated the picture over and we are um, seeing that it's on, it appears to be on the septal leaflet. Okay. And then on the second set of images, which is a biplane through it, uh, we don't have a very clean window um, on the left uh, image, but the biplane shows clearly that it's attached to the septum in a true four-chamber view. And then we go to a dedicated four-chamber view, and you can see that it's right on that leaflet. And we go down into the stomach. Um, if you look at the right image, you can see that we're in a short axis view and you can see where the septum is and the mass is right next to the septum and then we cut through it and you can see it um, on the uh, long axis plane and we've actually I've tried a bigger shot of that long axis plane on the left. Um, here are just some 3Ds to uh, give you some uh, a better visualization of it. So we are sitting in the right atrium looking down at the mass. Uh, the uh, uh, interventricular uh, septum is at 6 o'clock. The semilunar valve is located at about the 8 o'clock position, so you know that the anterior is going to be, leaflet is going to be on the left, posterior to the right, and then the septum at 6 o'clock. And then um, I'm giving you a couple of different views of this. So this mass was located on the septal leaflet or annulus. Uh, this patient actually was screened for malignancy and no other masses were found. He was seen by CV surgery for removal, but uh, the intervention was deferred due to stable size during follow-up on serial MRIs as well as TE and the risk of a, pacemaker, a need for pacemaker uh, post-surgery. Um, more recently, I heard from the outside cardiologist that follows him that uh, he's been diagnosed with a lymphoma, um, though the mass itself has not changed. So this is briefly uh, to review the anatomy of tricuspid valve. If you're in a true mid-esophageal view, you're looking usually at the septal and anterior leaflets. If you've actually pushed down and you see the coronary sinus, you're looking at the posterior and the anterior leaflets. In a uh, short axis mid-esophageal view, you're usually, and you see three leaflets, you're looking at the posterior, anterior, and septal leaflets. In a four chamber view, you're usually looking at the septal and anterior leaflets. When you go into the stomach, once again, the septum tells you where the septal leaflet is, and then the liver is where the posterior leaflet and the 
the remaining leaflet then is the anterior leaflet and when you cut through then you can actually appreciate which leaflets you're looking at. Now let's uh, look at this case for triclip assessment. So this is an 83-year-old female who has a history of bypass surgery. She was found to have severe tricuspid regurgitation with increased RV size and was referred for a triclip. So is she a candidate? So first uh, we um, do our first images when we're assessing looking at the source of the jet. Uh, here we're in the uh, transcatric views once again. We want to make sure that uh, we can see where the origin of the jet is and we want to know if it's really between the anterior and septal leaflets or the posterior and septal leaflets because those are where we place our clips. We do not place them between the anterior and posterior leaflet because there's no view for us to double check clip placement on that. Most of the times you'll find that the jets are most patients have secondary TR and so the jets are central um, but what we need is we need to find out if we can move from the commissures towards the body of the leaflets and um, if patients have a pacemaker lead, that does not preclude them from getting a clip procedure. We just want to now, in this view, see where the lead is going and make sure that, that there is jet that is in an area different from where the pacemaker lead is. We try not to jail the leads if we don't have to. So we do a series of images in the transgastric views where we cut through the anterior and posterior leaflet the, um, and we essentially locate the, um, locate the color and we then take color off, take the 2D image, and then take the color image. And what we want to do is we want to see that we can see the um, where the jet is coming from and what the views look like in this view. So in this patient, they've got a large central jet, but they do have jet coming from between the posterior and septal leaflets as well as the anterior and septal leaflets. Now we come up to the mid-esophageal or low-esophageal views. And we go to an, a short axis view. And here we want to see the RV inflow outflow. And what we want, we're a little off axis here, but this is the way we could get the views because of the RV enlargement. And we want to see three leaflets. We want to see the uh, posterior leaflet, which is the leftmost, and then the anterior leaflet in the middle, and the septal leaflet along the septum. And we cut through, we put the color on, we see where the jet is, and we cut through each of these leaflets with the biplane with and without color to localize the jet. So the left is how we deliver the device and know that we are placing it properly and aligning ourselves properly. The biplane that cuts through usually gives you a reverse four chamber view, which lets us know if we're delivering the device properly and we wanna know what the gap is, okay? So that's why we do these series of views. Once we have that, then we actually try and get these true sort of four chamber views because this is how we're going to look at to place the clips. And we want to know that the gap between the two leaflets is less than seven millimeters. Uh, we also want to make sure that the septal leaflet is more than a centimeter um, in order to grab and it's not too curled or that there are no cords in the area where we're planning to clip uh, because those can actually impede um, our ability to get under the leaflet and uh, to grab it. So here at the top, you've got the posterior and anterior leaflets because you see coronary sinus, which is very dilated, and you see there's a, a jet there. And then we've got on the right row a, a true four-chamber view with no coronary sinus visible, so you know that this is septal and anterior leaflet there. And you see there's jet everywhere, so that gives us a couple of options for placing the clip. We also do um, the reverse four, uh, once again, to look at the gaps as well as to look at uh, any septal leaflet pathology. Uh, 3D echocardiography is very important. Um, it's much more challenging to get 3D tricuspid valve images than compared to transthoracic images. But here I've oriented the top, uh, the left and um, the middle images in the sort of the ASC guideline way with the septum at six o'clock. And then if you know where your semilunar valve is, so here we're looking um, from a uh, uh, from a um, and a uh, right atrial view, so you can see this, uh, sorry, a right ventricular view, so you can see that the um, RV outflow tract is to your four o'clock position, and so then the anterior leaflet is at one o'clock, and then your posterior leaflet's about nine o'clock, and your septal leaflet's at six o'clock, and then you've got the color jet, and you can see the color jet running up the septum there. And then here, there's a push for a lot of the interventional echocardiographers to reorient how we position the tricuspid valve, and what they really want to do is put the aortic valve or the outflow tract at about one o'clock, uh, so then your septum is at about uh, three o'clock to see, um, to orient better for the procedure. So this patient was accepted, 
and uh, the here's some images from the procedure. So here, if the, in image A, you can see that we're bringing the clip in. Uh, we're in that inflow outflow view. We've got the three leaflets. Uh, where we want to go is where the star is, and so this is how. Um, we bring the clip in. Uh, we want to first, before we dive in, make sure our clip is oriented in the direction that we want because we don't want to make a lot of movements once we're in the ventricle because we don't want to get caught up in the cords. So if you look at image B, we're a little really off plane here. And then if you look at image C, we're right over the, um, the septal and anterior commissure. And then if you now we're in the RV, if you look at image A, we've pushed into the right ventricle. We're now we've kind of pushed when we pushed in, moved a little bit more medial uh, than um, than we had planned. So what we do is we go into the transgastric views. Once again, we get that those visualization of three leaflets. We can see the um, the orientation of the clip is not exactly perpendicular to the coaptation line between the anterior and the septal leaflets. So we um, re reorient ourselves. So if you look at the 3D image on uh, panel C, you can see that we're reorienting a little bit better along the coaptation line. And then when we come back up to the mid-esophageal views, you can see that in image D, uh, we're actually close to that septal leaflet. You can see where we are, and you can see that we are, um, that's a picture of us closing the clip, and we can see both the anterior um, sorry, this uh, anterior and the septal leaflets lying on the clip nicely as we close and that um, we have a good grab there. So this picture shows that first clip. We still have a little bit of tricuspid regurgitation, uh, but we can see that it's holding on nicely. Even if the um, we don't reduce the jet a lot, this first clip actually serves and is the sort of an annual plasty to bring the valve in a little bit and makes it easier for us to get the other clips on later on. So now we're gonna, because we have residual regurgitation, we're gonna put a second clip on. So uh, in panel A here, we're reorienting above the clip, to, uh, above the first one. We're gonna put the second clip right um, next to the first one, uh, grabbing both the um, anterior and the septal leaflets again. We once again, if you look at panel B, we dive in once we've oriented ourselves, and now we're gonna try and bring it up and grab it. And on panel C, you can see the, leaf, uh, the clip closing. Um, there's a lot more artifact now, now that we have that first clip in. So between the instrumentation as well as the first clip, there's a lot more artifact. The pictures become a little bit tougher uh, with the second clip, and you can see we were able to place a second clip on image D. Now we go back into the stomach, we check the to make sure that the leaflets are really tightly into that clip and you can see on image, um, on the left image there, uh, we've got that uh, anterior leaflet going into the clip as we sweep through and there's color, but there's still color coming above it, um, the clip uh, more centrally. Um, and we can see that there's color coming around it on the rightmost image if we, when we go back into the esophageal picture. So now we're going to uh, try and place a third clip to get further reduction in the tricuspid regurgitation. But instead of going between the septal and anterior leaflets, we're going to go between the septal and posterior leaflets. So the uh, 3D image on the left, we're positioning our clip orientation to make sure that it's going to be as a perpendicular to co-optation as we can get. And then on the right, you can see some of the challenges with the imaging here. Um, we go down into the um, ventricle here and we're trying to close the clip if you look at that biplane you can see the clip closing as it goes uh, plays through the clip but the problem is even though we can see where the um posterior leaflet is uh, or is being grabbed uh, we or the septal leaflet is being grabbed we really can't see that anterior due to shadowing from the device and so that makes it really challenging to place it and so because we couldn't be confident of that grab we actually um, did not place a third clip in this patient so in the end, uh, though, the patient had significant improvement in their clinical function and was doing well. Um, their TR was reduced and, um, and they were uh, very happy with the procedure six months after uh, it was performed. Thank you for listening.